Hi, I'm Emily Raggart, Senior Editor with NAB Amplify. I'm here today with representatives from VizLink and Vidovation. Hi guys. Hey, how's it going? Hi, how's it Good. going? Jim and Mickey, would you like to take some time to introduce yourselves and your backgrounds? Yeah, great. Uh, my name's Mickey Miller, I'm CEO of VizLink. VizLink is a video-centric wireless network provider. Uh, any medium, whether it's proprietary Coftum, 5G, bonded 5G and 4G, uh, any medium with an AI layer to make workflows more efficient. I've been in the tech industry for many time, for many years, and have built and sold companies along the way. Great, Jim. How about you? Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for having us today. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Jim Jaquetta, CTO and co-founder of Vidovation. Uh, we we do quite a few different things. Uh, one of the things we're specializing or featuring here at the show is at home production or Remy production. You know, using, uh, uh, producing a show with multiple cameras over an unmanaged network, whether that's cellular or the public internet. Uh, we also have, uh, we represent and our partners with VizLink, so we represent many of their solutions, wireless from, from VizLink to their bonded cellular uh, mobile viewpoint products. Uh, we also have a line of lower cost uh, wireless solutions and we're also working with a lot of media facilities offering uh, enterprise IPTV and digital signage. So those are some of the things that we're doing and, and featuring here at the show today. Excellent. So you told us a little bit about yourselves, a little bit else about your, a little bit of an intro about your companies as well. Mickey, is there anything else you'd like to add about Biz, about BizLink? Yeah, so uh, along with Jim said, remote production is a key uh, trend in the industry as well as leveraging both cloud, big data, AI, and, and 5G and whatever medium. Uh, so when you look at our offering, what, what we've introduced for the show, one is our 5G for live solution. It's a private network that's used for a multiple of different use cases, whether it's video uplink, uh, remote camera control, uh, tally, you name it, it's able to, to handle across the board. Um, in addition, we've, we've introduced Again, with that theme of remote production, our TerraLink Remy product, which is basically a um, four camera encoder that al allows you to have, uh, again, tally, all the, all the tools that you need to be able to remotely produce an event over SRT or whatever medium makes sense. So we find that hugely valuable. It's, it's, a very competitive cost uh, to be able to remote produce a variety of different content. And as you know, content is so desirable in all types of formats that we're there to help our customers create more compelling and innovative content. So one of the things we've introduced is our Click product. This is uh, either uh, two 1080p feeds or one 4K HVC feed. So many times you can see it for like a a camera shot and a shoulder shot. So very immersive, but whether it be motorsports or any type of sport to be able to connect to that, to that really compelling video uh, that a lot, of, a lot of companies are looking for. And as well as, this is our traditional, what we call our HCAM. This is a proprietary Coftum network product that you'll see everywhere. You, you know, you, there are 27 of these at the Super Bowl, at major events, you see this type of product. And what we've added on to it is now a 5G transmitter. So in a 5G environment, you can also leverage the encoder from this. So it allows a lot of flexibility for our partners to be able to do it in whatever mode is, is available. In addition, we have our bonded 4G, 5G solutions as well. So we're giving flexibility to our partners to be able to create all types of different content because you know, whether it's fast channels or traditional channels or traditional broadcasts, everybody's looking for new. Uh, this type of product, when you look at um, uh, reality TV shows, game shows, huge product because it gives you the flexibility. You don't have a cord and power cord to deal with. Yeah, content is certainly the currency, not just at the show this year, but in terms of anything we're doing in the media and entertainment business. Um, so can we talk about a little bit what you're hearing from customers? I don't know if you both would like to take this question in terms of challenges related to the demand for content and how you're able to help address it. 
Well, yeah, I think in um, in our industry, and, and I'm sure Mickey will agree, there's always the challenge with that first mile, mm -hmm. getting the content onto the network, getting the content into the cloud. And Mickey purchased the company to solve that that very problem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, their their bread and butter is is the microwave, getting it from the field to the truck. But if you use cellular, you can bypass the truck. You can do the at-home production, bring the video, bring ISO cameras back to your master control, hence the term at home. I yeah. produced the show at my home. But now with COVID, at home has now really become your home. Uh, there's people working from home. So th they came up with that term years ago, and it's really uh, applicable now. <laughs> Uh, we're very pleased to to work uh, as a Vizlink partner. Mickey mentioned reality TV shows. We, a reality TV show in Mexico approached us, and uh, Vidovation specified a bunch of this Coftum technology. They have a wide variety of products, products with the receiver built into the monitor for video assist, etc. So there's a number of different systems that we integrated into the workflow. At Vidovation, we, we like to solve problems. We listen to our customers. And, and together, we felt Vizlink was the best choice, and they came up with a, a solid solution for that. Um, we're also excited uh, in partnering with, with Vizlink. They have uh, a bunch of camera AI technology. Um, one product that's not AI-based, it's called the Trolley. Mm -hmm. The Trolley, we, we have it in both of our booths. So with, with uh, analyst talent working from home, um, during COVID, they didn't want a technician coming into the house, wasn't allowed. So they make a nice little box, you open up the lid, the cam a PTZ camera pops out, there's a monitor. Um, the operator only has to know how to plug it in and hit the power switch and open a latch and it, 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 it's live. If the talent doesn't know how to frame the camera, there's a little remote, they can frame the camera from master control. Then they're also using AI in the studio and on sporting fields to capture content where in the studio you don't have the, the budget for camera operators. So it's PTZ cameras. This whole event could have been done multi-camera. <laughs> And like right now, the AI would know that I'm speaking, so the camera would zoom tight in on me. Then if one of you speak, it would go wide, and the AI figures out and produces the show automatically. So that's in the studio. And then they have the IQ Sport, which is a similar concept where they take several 4K images of the field and stitch them together, and the AI follows the soccer ball. It follows the hockey puck. And they're teaching it new sports. You know, it's a European yeah. solution. So the European <laughs> solutions came first. Hockey, football is really soccer. But you guys are training it to do football now, right? That's coming next. Yeah, we, we have it at a uh, Division One school right now where it's training. And it, and it learns not only the movement of, uh, of the ball, but also the rules of the game. And what's interesting, now we have a, we've taken that AI layer and we can say we can train it to what highlights are. So it knows that a highlight is created. Um, so like if you, you want to say, it, you know, when this happens, it creates a highlight. Or if two specific people are in, um, in the clip, then it will create a highlight. And that highlight can immediately be sent over social or you can mint an NFT with it. And so there's a variety of things that you can do and it's all machine driven. And then downstream, uh, you know, there's so much content in, coming in that both news producers, sport producers, everyone's looking, okay, I, I, can't, I can't look at it all. Because when you look at what we do, we want to get as much content to, that can be re remotely produced. But then when you do that, how then do you manage all that content? And that's where we use our AI to identify, you know, this is what you're looking for. This is a highlight. This is what, you know, after a, uh, a football game, for instance, you know, it automatically creates a highlight reel that you can then send right out to whatever feed you'd like to. And so given that ability to have machines make those decisions and whittle down the decisions that humans need to make, we see a lot of value and our customers uh, see that as a lot of value. I'm really just struck by how many different trends and, and buzzworthy topics the two of you have mentioned in the past five minutes. <laughs> We're I think. Just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? 
I mean, like, I think you've been pretty good at staying away from like any of the more obscure acronyms. Um, yeah. But I mean, the, the, you're clearly on the content train. You're clearly on the the, the next edge, and you're also have been um, looking down the road <laughs> at things like what was at home when it really is in your living room right. and and where it's going next. Um, so I'm I'm curious if there are any other trends that you haven't touched on yet since you said that you were just getting started and where you think things are going in 2023 and maybe even beyond for your business. You, you want to take that? So one, one of the common questions that I get, I don't know if you get this question too, Mickey, maybe you do. Well, you, you offer a number of different bonded cellular solutions. 5G is here. Aren't you going to be out of business? Mm. So I live. I, I grew up in in New York, so I know traffic. <laughs> but you don't know traffic till you move to California, because <laughs> they don't have trains. There's no trains, no public transportation. So you have to drive, and the bus is scary, or they don't have that many buses. So I use that analogy. Since I've been living in California about 13 years now, they've been continually putting more lanes on the highway. So you think traffic is going to go away? Mm. more people they f the second there's a new lane they fill it with more cars so i use the same analogy 5g they're going to fill the highway with more more bandwidth it's going to be more uses more consumer uses the carriers have been promising uh, a quality of service or a private channel for us media vendors to use uh to get a get a higher level service one of these years, they'll figure it out. I mean, it, it feels, uh, 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 fundamentally, they could do it if they want to, but there's restrictions, net neutrality yeah, uh, gets in the in. way. Um, so 5G, and then also the other thing is people don't remember is we're pushing the video out. As a consumer, when we're using our phone, we're watching Netflix, Hulu, whatever your flavor of choice. The downlink is fast. And the 5G that's out there now, it's 5G from the tower to your phone. The core of the tower is still 4G. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember years ago when 3G came out, there was litigation. It's really 3G light. It's not. So we're not fully 5G yet. And then if we're talking 5G, it's the sub 6 gigahertz 5G. It's not the millimeter wave stuff, the really high throughput stuff that that. We've done some testing with Verizon. We've done some proof of concept. But where I see the big benefit in 5G is, yes, we'll have more bandwidth, but the latency will be lower. Mm -hmm. So we can be more aggressive. Cellular needs some buffering because it's a, it's a choppy network. So the network will be more consistent. It'll have lower latency. And everyone wants, I mean, you do low latency camera systems. Every, yeah. They want the latency essentially zero. So we can we can get there, we can get closer to that with 5G for sure. Yeah. And one thing I think 5G will do over time is not just on the production side, but on the distribution side. So as consumers, um, a lot of our customers want to talk, talk to us about how can we customize specific feeds to whoever your favorite player is, your favorite driver, um, you, you know, or whatever is of interest to you to customize that. So. 5G in the, in the downlink element of that allows you to do many of those things. So it's going to be about more content, more compelling content that's customized to the individual viewer. And then how do you stay connected to your customer? That's what our customers want to know. How, how, how we can use technology to allow them to stay connected to their customer beyond the three hour day when they're at that sporting event. Yeah, you're talking about a lot of like basic supply and demand challenges. You know, like with 5G, there's just going to be more demand driven up and um, there's a lot of a traffic cop issue as well. So um, that's a, these are all really great points that you two have raised. Um, and I believe we have about a minute left. So if there's any final words that you guys would like to impart, um, please take the opportunity. Well, well, thank you for coming. We're very glad you're here. And we'll continue to innovate and so that all of us as consumers can get that content the way we like it when we want it. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, Mickey touched on it. Uh, we talked about it earlier too. There, there. I'm in. I'm encouraged. Like Amazon doing Thursday night football. There, there've been mm -hmm. some growing pains, some bandwidth yeah. challenges. We won't get into that. <laughs> Maybe we can solve that for Amazon. Right. But more <laughs> content. So there's there's a bigger demand for content. So we do a lot of work with the PGA, and uh, for the many of the Masters tournaments, they will use 
microwave, Mickey's core technology, but for the corn fairy, basically like the AAA, the minor leagues of, of golf, you have to work your way up to get to the, ma I'm not a golf expert, I'm a behind the scenes guy, but to work your way up to the masters, there's lower tiers and there's not the budget, the advertising dollars like the masters tournaments for as the corn fairy tournament. So we're doing the corn fairy tournaments. We're getting more content to the golf channel, uh, uh, more coverage to the internet where two, three, four, five years ago, golf fans could not see that content. So Mickey and I are offering lower cost solutions to capture that content where the budgets for the gear and the personnel are not there and we're solving those problems. Yeah. One last comment about the PGA. Ten years ago, the PGA had one person that handled the IT and, and, and comms and video. Now there's over 100 people. They want to be able to film every single shot by every single player. So, I mean, that's just one example of one brand, but that's happening across the board. And I can second all of that as uh, the sister of a brother who worked for the PGA and the ops. So yeah. <laughs> um, that's a, you know, you may think golf is a boring sport, but putting it all together is far <laughs> from a slow paced game. Yeah. So thank you both for your time. Um, I'm sure some of you have some questions and you're encouraged to step over to the networking lounge and say hi to Mickey and Jim and learn a little bit more. And thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you everyone. Thank you.